bridges are dramatic, especially when they're lit up at night. But they're not the only water problem that the Romans had to solve here in Augusta Emerita. They also had to figure out how to get water to them. So I'm going to look at bridges and aqueducts today. Now, I thought I was going to be all smart and ride out to this little bridge over the Alcantarilla. Um, it's near the Guadiana. It's little, and I was like, oh, this is really cool. And I get out there, and there's no sign explaining it. I'm like, dang, there's a lot of Roman ruins when you have something of Roman origin and it doesn't even have a sign telling you what it is. And I, oh, yeah, I thought I was smart. And, you know, I was recording on Strava, and I was like, oh, yeah, I got out here, and I kept going. I went out into the country, and I enjoyed that. And then I decided to come back into town, and I clicked end on my ride, though I wasn't back to the hotel. And I stopped in front of a Roman bridge that I didn't take a picture of, because there are that many Roman ruins that nothing is mentioned. I then, of course, proceeded to ride back over. Anyway, so these two bridges are small, but the showstopper is this one over the Guadiana. It's more than half a mile long. I think it rates at seven-tenths of a kilometer, so it's a pretty decent-sized bridge. And the whole thing isn't Roman, but it was initially constructed by the Roman, and this part here definitely is. And if you go out into the island in the middle of the river, you can see that the arches look pretty good. And in fact, when you get up close to it, I tried to stick my thumb into the joints to show you just how tight they were. And it's really well fitted even after all of these years and all of the being near the elements because, you know, rivers flood. Anyway, the Romans knew how to build a bridge. They also liked a good water feature in town, even if this one's kind of gross. This was in front of the Temple of Minerva, and it's really nasty and stagnant, but it underlines the fact that people have to have water, and they did just that. The Romans brought it in when they couldn't go underground, which they definitely did. They brought it in aqueducts, and as you can see, they didn't necessarily survive time, but this one is called Aqueducto de los Milagros. Um, it's not in great shape. This one over here, it's called the Aqueduct of San Lazaro, and it's in considerably better shape. Um, it also has a bike trail in front of it. Can you guess how I found out about the bike trail? Anyway, um, so this water would be brought from various sources, either springs bubbling up or they dam up something. I believe Aqueducto de los Milagros was fed by dammed up reservoirs and the uh, Aqueduct of San Lazaro, San Lazaro was fed by springs bubbling up. Anyway, they would be brought into town, and this is just outside of where the walls to the city would have been. And I'll give you a little help seeing the course of the aqueduct. Would have been brought in, and here's some more, with some more help from your imagination. They would have brought it in and put it into sedimentation or catchment cisterns where basically they take all the nasty sediment out. Because who wants to drink all the nasty stuff in water? You've got to treat it somehow. And the Romans actually did that, which is pretty advanced. So that's kind of all I've got for you today. It feels kind of perfunctory to me, so add a comment and tell me how I so dearly messed this up. That does seem to be the thing the classics community loves to do. Um, drop me a like if you want to let the algorithm know what to do, and subscribe if you feel like I'm saying things that are useful. Next week, 
definitely not going to be more of Spain, though I do have a little more to share. Till next time.